In this video, I'm going to talk about the power and the magic of nested lists in Power Query. We'll talk about how do you create nested lists. We'll also talk about two highly practical applications of nested lists in real life examples. And I will do my best job to make the best damn video on nested lists that you have seen so far. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power Query and that's where I'm going to start me creating some nested lists. If you don't already know what exactly is a list, then I will highly recommend that you watch another video of mine, which is where I've spoken about lists. But let's just start somewhere from a list and then start to create nested list. This is the base theory that you need to understand in order for you to work and apply nested lists in real life examples. So I've created this blank query called nested lists and I'm going to go over in the source tab and start to create a list to begin with. So I'm going to start with curly brackets that's how you create a list and within the curly brackets I will write three letters a b and c once I do that and I commit on this you're gonna see that we obviously get a list and a nested list is not nothing but a list inside of a list that means that if we have a list outside and the items of the lists are also lists that makes it a nested list how do you create one it's like really really simple all that you do is make a outside curly bracket and within the curly brackets whatever you write is going to be a nested list once again so this is the initiation of the outer list the outside curly brackets then here is my first list I'm gonna put in a comma right here and then maybe have another list so I'm gonna say one dot dot three which is three numbers in a list and then close the bracket right here you could have also written one comma two comma three but that's just an easier way of creating a list so now I'm saying that hey here is an outside list and within that there are two lists the first list and the second list and the structure is going to change slightly and you're going to see that we have a list outside and and we have two lists within that. If I click on the side, we can of course preview that list as well. And that's how you kind of simply create a nested list. The bigger question is, why would you wanna create the nested list in the first place? Like where all could you possibly use it is something that we will take a look at next. Let's just move on to our first case. In our first example, we are working with some very simple data. I've got a bunch of columns right here, date, name, some sales, some cost, and some profit. Now, if you take a look at the data, sure enough, we see two errors right here on the screen, which is where the date column has the error. If I just maybe click on the side of the error, you're gonna see that this particular cell was marked as NA in Excel or perhaps wherever the source was. So this is NA, and of course, this cell is also NA. So what I wanna do is I wanna replace all the errors, no matter NA error, div error, any kind of errors that are there in the source data, I wanna replace those errors with a null, just a blank, but I don't want the errors to be lurking around in my data. Well, how do you do that? First off, we're going to take the help of the user interface and let's just see that what code Power Query generates if I do that operations with the click of the Power Query. So let's just perhaps uh, select the column date and I'm going to go over to the transform tab and we have replace values drop down, which is where we have replace errors. And if I just maybe say that, hey, I want to replace this with a null, I'm going to click on OK. Sure enough, some code gets generated. I'm also going to quickly do that on the name column as well. So if I just maybe perhaps click on both of these columns, uh, transform tab and replace values, replace errors. I'm going to replace that with the null right here. Now, sure enough, it has created another step. I'm just going to delete the previous step and just keep this step for a bit because we have been able to replace the errors in both the columns, the date column as well as the null column. The problem is solved. However, you're going to see that this particular function hard codes the names of the column. So date column in which the error was removed has been hard coded. The name column has been hard coded. No problem in case I get additional new columns in my data and I want to remove the errors from all of the possible columns in my data. This query is not going to work. So let's just go take a look at this particular code. I'm going to control C on the code and I'm going to paste this code in notepad. I'm just going to start to make sense of this code. So if I now start to take a look at the code, you're going to see that table dot replace error values function has been used by power query fair enough it says that i want to start replacing the errors in a table called change type which is the previous step which is right here then it says that hey in order for me to replace the errors in multiple columns what i need is a nested list so if you take a look at here we have a list outside and this list outside creates an inside list the first inside list and the second inside list because they are in the curly brackets 
Every single sublist or inside list contains two parts, the name of the column and the value that you would like to use to replace the column values. So again, the name of the columns and the value that you would like to use. So if we are able to create this particular structure, not by hard coding the values, and then replace that structure right here, which is dynamic, then our problem is going to be solved. I repeat, what kind of structure? We want a nested list, which is where every single list is going to have the name of the column and the value that you'd like to replace it with. Simple as that. In case you're liking the video thus far, you're going to absolutely love my courses on Power Query, DAX, data modeling, and especially the M language, which is where I break down very complicated concepts around data cleaning and ETL, and then try to help you understand that how do you build or how do you frame logic to be able to build your solution on your own data. These are extremely structured courses, which is where I take students right from scratch, build up the fundamentals, and then we go on, start talking about more advanced, more complicated problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have left some raving feedback about the course. In case you're interested to take your skills to the next level, I'll highly encourage that you take a look at the courses and they will be super beneficial. Thanks so much. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna delete this particular step and I'm gonna to start to do my work. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new step. In the new step, I'm gonna say that, hey, First off, my first job is to just to get the names of all the columns. So I'm going to go ahead and use a function table.columnNames, start the bracket and close the bracket uh, in the end. And what I get is a list. And in the list, we have the names of all the columns. At this particular time, we are not quite there in what we want, because if you take a look at our notepad, our notepad suggested that we want a list. So this is the list, which is an outside list. This is our outside list within which we want every single item to be a list and the list should contain two parts. The first part is name of the column, which is right here. And the second part is the, that null value. So I would want two things from here on. I would want to convert date into a list, like a container list. And the date alongside the word date, which is the column header, should also contain one more value, which is nothing but the null value. And both of these should be packed in the form of a list. If I'm able to create this kind of structure, we have literally solved the problem. So let's just proceed on from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to write some code. So I'm going to say, hey, I would want to transform a particular list. So for which I'm going to use a function list.transform. List.transform first part is, hey, give me a list to work with. And here is a list that you should be working with. In this list, for the moment, I want to do nothing. You can see that the second part of the function is saying, how would you like to transform? I don't want to transform it at the moment. I just want to do nothing. So to be able to say do nothing as a function, I can just simply use the each and the underscore keywords at the moment. That means take every single value and do nothing with that. I'm going to press enter and this is good to go. Now, this underscore means the first item in the first iteration, the second item in the second iteration, so on and so forth. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this underscore and I want to wrap it inside of a list. So if I just maybe use a list structure, which is the curly bracket outside of the underscore, this simply means that take the very item and just wrap it around in the curly brackets and make it as a list. So you have an outside list and then you have an inside list and this is going to create that structure that we are looking for, which is nothing but a nested list structure. At the moment, we have been able to solve problem number one, which is where we want a nested list structure, sure enough. But this nested list structure is missing one critical ingredient, which is I have the column name, but I also want to have that null value. Well, how can we do that? I can simply just add a comma. This is my first item of the list, which is nothing but the text or the name of the column. And the second item of the list is going to be, of course, null. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say this is going to be null. And this actually creates two items in that list. And we now have been able to create that structure that we were looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a meaningful name as well. So this is going to be my column replacement. And then I'm going to make another step and I'm going to use the code that I just copied a while ago. So I'm going to say control C on that. I'm going to stick the code right here. The only problem with this particular code is that this code has the hard coded values. Sure enough, it's going to give me the right answer, but I don't want the values to be hard coded in the list of a list structure. I however want to cancel this and I want to replace that with the column re replacement list of a list structure that I have created 
which is going to be just delete that and write the column replacement right here and it just works beautifully the result doesn't change because we have not added any other column but in case any other columns get added with an error this column replacement is automatically going to take care of all the columns of the table and replace that with the null values once you have understood the list of a list technique you can start taking this approach to more nuanced level and start to do more sophisticated operations with your queries all right after a little change in the clothing let's just move on to example number two so in this data that I'm working with, we obviously have these three columns, sales USD, cost USD, and profit USD. And all of these USD columns, which contain the numbers, I'd like to divide them by a thousand. That means all of these numbers, which contain the USD in the end, they should be divided by one thousand. And this process should be dynamic. Now, first things first, I would like to take a look at under the hood that if I were to take a look at the UI approach, how would that look like? I'm going to act naive as if I did not know the M code. Let's just see that if I click the buttons in Power Query, what M code gets produced. So I'm going to go over to this particular column. Let's say sales USD. I'm going to go over to the transform tab. In the transform tab, we have standard and I'd like to divide that with a thousand. So I do that and I click on OK, and that is the M code that gets generated. Pretty nice. I'm going to copy this particular M code, and I will try to make sense of this M code. That means what does it have, and then how can I modify it to change it to my own behavior? And obviously, I want my thousand division to be dynamic. No matter how many USD columns I have, it should dynamically pick up all of those columns and do this operation that I have just done it manually. So nevertheless, please take a look. So it says table.transform columns. It would want to transform a particular table and a few columns off of the table and the table is nothing but the step that we just did a while ago which is replace errors I just renamed that and within which it says that hey to be able to transform multiple columns I need a list of a list structure you can see that we have an outside list and within which we have an inside list since we applied the transformation to only one column we just have one inside list had it been more than one columns we would have multiple nested lists inside of that let's just take a look at what does this list constitute of so if you take a look at the first part of the list it says i would like to get the name of the column in the text and that's the text value that is right here then the second input of this particular nested list is a function that takes every value and divides it by a thousand the each and the underscore divided by a thousand and the data type which has been applied to this particular column which is a number now when we are designing our own custom solution we also have to come up with this particular structure which is where we have a nested list and every single list at least has two parts which is the name of the column and the division by 1000 which is the each underscore divided by 1000 and we can also have the data type but that data type is not mandatory we can leave it out but sure enough we would like to add that as well now this is what i am trying to create for all of the columns which are present here not just one column but the question is how do i make it dynamic Let's start with that. So I'm going to get rid of the divided column step that I have done it right here and I will start producing a nested list. And for that, I'm going to go over to the FX right here, make a new step and I will start collecting the names of the columns at least because that's one thing that I would need. So I will use the function table.column names. We have done that a bazillion times. So table.column names, it asks you for a table. Of course, the previous step is my table. I commit on that and you can see that we have captured all the names of the columns. Now, I'm not interested in all the names of the columns. I'm just interested in those columns that end with this particular keyword USD. Let's just filter our list. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to apply a filter function, which is not the filter function, but list.select function, which applies a filter to a list. So list.select give me a list that you're trying to work with and here is that particular list and then it says what is your filter function logic like means give me a logic that produces a true and false that I can um, test it against every single row and if it gives me a true sure enough I will keep that item so I'm going to go here and write some logic and my logic is something like this I'm going to say hey why don't you go in every single row and test for the ending keyword so text dot ends with is the function so ends with and pick up every single text and see that if it does it end with the word usd or not now just in case if tomorrow somebody writes the u small i still want this to work just all right so i'm going to also give the comparer as a nullable function which is where i'll say that hey this is going to be ignoring the case that 
the user writes. So ordinal ignore case is what I will write. I'm going to close the bracket and press enter. And this actually only filters down to three items of the list, which is where we had the USD. Now at this stage, if you try to compare the output that we have gotten to, and the output that we want to get to, we have just solved for partial problem. So we have been able to get this outside list that gives us the first check mark and within which every single item is not a list anymore. So we would want every single item of the list to be a list, not a text, but we've been able to get the text value. So sales USD, cost USD and profit USD. My next step is going to be to be able to convert every single item into a list. So to which I'm going to go ahead and say something like, hey, I'm trying to transform this particular list. So I'll say list dot transform and every single item of this list needs to be transformed into a list again. So each underscore and then I will wrap that in the curly brackets. That's what we saw just a while ago and close the bracket right here. So give me the item the way it is, but please wrap that in the list. Now I do that and you can see that we have been able to get this. And if you compare that with the output that we were trying to get to, we have been able to produce a nested list structure. So this is a nested list structure, list outside, list inside, list outside, list inside. In the inside list, I have been able to get the first value, which is the sales USD. Now I will try to get the second value, which is, hey, divide that by a thousand. Now, since we already know that this particular code works, works pretty well when we were doing it with the UI, why don't we try you using this particular function, control C on that and entering that as the second input of the list that we're trying to create. That means the first value is the text, obviously, and the second value is nothing but the function, which takes every value and divides by a thousand. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to put in a comma and I'm going to say that the transformation is going to be this particular transformation. And now if I actually go ahead and commit on this, this particular list, which is the inside list contains two things. It contains the name, which is coming from the underscore and it contains the function, which is dividing it by a thousand. So if I just go take a look, you can see that the second input is actually a function input. Now, although we need three things, but the formula is just going to work fine. Even when you have two mandatory inputs, which is the name of the column and the transformation that you want to do in that column. Pretty good. At the moment, I'm going to go here and rename this particular step. So I will say divide one K and this is good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new step and I'm going to go ahead and copy this formula. So I will just go ahead and control C on that and control V on that. And this is good to go. At the moment, you're going to see that this works just fine on one column, uh, which is dividing it by a thousand, but it doesn't quite divide the other columns because at the moment sales USD is hard coded. Now we were trying to mock up something that replaced this part of the formula, which we have already done because that this part of the formula that we have been able to create contains the column names, contains the divide function, good to go. So I will just delete all of this and I would rather say, hey, we've been able to create this divide 1k, which is the list of uh, list columns. So divide 1k and that should work just fine. Now, if you take a look at this, all of the columns, sales USD, cost and profit have been divided by a thousand. This is pretty good. Additionally, I just want to make the query a bit neater and cleaner. So I'm going to go back to this divide 1k and I'm going to say that, hey, we definitely need three parts in here. The first part is the name. The second part is the function. And the final part is nothing but the data type declaration. I do that. If I come and take a look at this particular step, sure enough, it also has that data type applied. Nice. There's one more thing that I want to do. Once you're dividing it by a thousand, I also want to convert it to a two decimal place. That's something that I would like to do. Let's just go take a look at how do we do that. So I go back to divide 1k and I say that this each and the underscore is doing that divide. And after you have done that, I would want to round it off. So I can just wrap this around in the number dot round function. Number dot round, do that thing that you're doing, comma and round it off by a two decimal place. Let's just take a look. Uh, everything seems to work just fine. Actually, the number dot round is going to come inside because there was an error right here. So I will just delete that and I will rather write here number dot round and start the bracket. And this is going to be good to go. So now you can see that this function just works all right. And if I now take a look at the next step right here, you can see that the numbers have been rounded off sure enough to a two decimal place. And my query looks so much neater and so much cleaner. If you like this video, then the next video is going to be transforming multiple columns again using a nested list. You can go here and watch it and I'll see you in that video. Cheers.